Hello everybody. This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to improve your vocabulary comprehension and your vocabulary skills by using a website called BYU COCA. Now this is Brigham Young University's website for the Corpus of Contemporary American English. It is uh, one of the best known sites worldwide for its um, corpus of English, basically um, all the words widely used in English. And the way you're going to use it is you're going to use your vocabulary words that we have on the flashcard machine. And for those words that you really want to know at a deeper level, they don't have to be all of them, but just those that you're struggling with to learn their definition, this is a good place to go. So let me show you how this would start. This is at corpus.byu. Edu. You can see it right here. And then it's forward slash COCA, C-O-C-A. Once you type that into your browser, you can go to the white box here that you see highlighted. And what you're going to do with this box is you're going to put in one of your words. So let's just go to the flashcard machine here and I'm bringing up your flashcards. And as you can see, these are familiar to you or should be that these are the types of words that come up on your 116 words that I have for you. So let's say words like augment or yield are words that you're having trouble studying. So you're going to just choose a few. I'm going to start with wield. And you type in the vocabulary word. And from there, you're going to click on find matching strings. Once you click on that, a new window should open for you. That window opens and you notice that your word is here. And its frequency is 1136. So it is a very, very well used word. Now to see the word in context, in other words, to see the word as it's used by people who write letters, who write articles, who write poems, whatever, you're going to click this word and another window is going to open. And this time it's going to show you the instances that wield occurs in different sentences across the English language as it's written currently. And on the left-hand side here, it shows the different magazines and articles and news shows that have currently used the word. So you see here CNN Tonight, and here's some things I don't, I'm not that familiar with. Here's Fantasy and Science Fiction, believe it or not, and Vanity Fair, Rolling Stones. You probably recognize some of these. Hollywood Reporter, and if you keep going down, you've got the Washington Post, USA Today. So quite a wide range of the way people use this particular word. So your job is to look at the word several times in several sentences and try to find a pattern. Try to find how this word is used with other words and ideas. And so I'm going to do this first word with you and start to get an idea on how these words, what we call collocate together, but it's actually what words tend to be used with this word wield. So let's take a, a look. Here we have, he can wield, he wields power at Breitbart. Okay, um, it's used with a sword. You'll see sword cuts both ways. He can, uh, it's a double-edged sword because he, sword because he can wield his power. All right, so it's something very powerful. There's weaponry as either literally or a metaphor. Um, let's come down to the second sentence. She had intended to wield only her delicate, sacred aviposphere. I'm not quite sure what that is, but she's going to use it in some very specific way. Down here, um, Will's father had always wanted to wield political influence. So he's using, he's demonstrating, he's something with political influence. Up here, she's using it for some sacred reason. Up here, he's wielding power. Down here, it's wielding a weapon. Here, wielding a bow and arrow. Okay, so it's a weapon. Here is a wielding a sword to quash a rebellion. So it's an actual sword. It's using, being used as an instrument or a weapon to use force to um, overcome an opponent or outpower well, an opponent. Again, sword, but here's an interesting one. The mightiest weapon we can wield now is our faith. 
So now it's talking about faith as a weapon, and when we wield faith, we're using it in a forceful way, in an influential way. Down here is wield great power. Um, so we know it is to use it, it is a verb, it is, but one that's used powerfully to influence either politically or religiously or in battle and war. So it's a very strong word. And it has to do with strength and power. Um, come down here, uh, thuggish prosecutors who wield outsized power, both in the Oregon district attorney, so somebody's really mad at the district attorney's office and doesn't like the way the district attorney uses its power over, apparently, its public. Okay? So down uh, further here, we're talking about a Jedi, and we're talking about Luke. We're going to assume Luke Skywalker wield it again, and I am assuming that they're talking about his lightsaber. So you're beginning to get the idea of how this word is often used. And if you're going to make a card or your notes, you might put wield to use an instrument, a weapon, or influence with great authority or power. And I think that gives you a a better idea. And then if you take one sentence away with you that to write on your card, what sentence would you write on your card? Well, you could write down uh, one that maybe you know. Everybody knows Luke Skywalker. He's a Jedi, and he has a, um, a lightsaber that he's used with great strength, great power, great influence to overcome the Imperial Empire, or whatever. Okay? So that is one way, one word. And I know this takes a little bit of an extra time, but think about it. Number one, you're going to be able to know the word wield in many different contexts. So when you see this word on the exam, if you should get it, then no matter how it's presented to you, you have enough depth about the word that you'll be able to use it no matter what synonym Post decides to use. Okay for that word. All right, let's take a look at another word. So let's go back to our list here. And oh, we looked at augment, deter, as maybe some, abrupt. So um, let's just try a few here. Let's try gratuity, OK? And we'll go to gratuity and see what we come up with. So we're going to come back here to search. And then we're going to replace wield with gratuity. Okay. And then we're going to find matching strings. And here's our word again. Not as frequent look. And then we click on it, and then we're going to see. Again, Hollywood Reporter comes up, the Boston Globe, People Magazine, New York Times, different journals. And let's see how they use it. OK, so we'll come up here. Had a discussion which the father shared that he was frustrated that the death gratuity, the financial benefit that goes with having a fallen soldier in the family. Mm, I like this one because not only is it going to say, it gives you an adjective here, death gratuity. So if you don't know the word gratuity, then you're like, well, something comes with death, but I don't know what it is. But right next to it is actually a definition. It's a financial benefit that goes with heaven, and in this case, a fallen soldier. But I need to keep reading, and I need more instances. If I stop here, then maybe think I think that gratuity is a financial benefit only at death. And so that would be a wrong assumption. So as you read along, you're going to get different ideas of what a gratuity is. Okay. So historical church or temple or mosque, and if I'm not confused, is whether their gratuity is included um, to make sure to leave some kind of tip. So again, I'm looking at some kind of financial benefit or financial expectation in this particular sentence. So now you're at a church or a temple, and you're talking about a tip. Well, a donation, I guess, right? That you, if you think of your own experiences, if you have any experience religiously anyway. Um, in the American system, they pass around a plate and you put money in the plate or you leave something in an envelope as a gratuity to the church. We also call that gratuity a donation, okay? I didn't get much here, so let's go down. Actually, I do. 
Similarity, gratuity at the time was defined as a free gift. Aha. So if we look at this, then we know that if I'm going to put a donation in a church, that's a free gift to the church. And down here, they're just talking that a gratuity is a free gift. And up here, it's a gift, I suppose, that you give to a soldier as a benefit of being a soldier. Not necessarily call that free because he had to work for it. But um, down here are bill clocks at 237, including tax, but before gratuity. So again, if your bill includes tax, but before gratuity, again, you're looking at a tip. Okay? So I'm going to keep coming down to see if I can see anything more. I'll skip a couple here, um, then added an additional gratuity on top of the bonus. So something free that you get. It could be a financial gain. It could be, um, it doesn't always have to be money. So um, we don't ne necessarily know what else. So we're going to keep coming down here. Uh, another small gratuity bought her advice on how to find their captains. So it could be advice. It could be, um, there's another death gratuity. But it seems like a $5 bill is a gratuity. Tax and gratuity. Again, we're talking about your bill at a restaurant. So I'm looking down here and I would read a lot more to see if I can get anything more about the word gratuity, but I know that how it's been used. Now look down here. Second trial found him guilty of conspiracy, honest services fraud, and giving an illegal gratuity, and he was sentenced to 20 months. So he gave something for free to gain favor, and we don't necessarily know. And down here, accepting an illegal gratuity, for taking um, a trip for the first game. So here somebody gave him a, a ticket to the World Series as a gratuity. Probably had to do something with a senator or somebody in political office that cannot accept a free gift for political favor. So again, keep reading down through this, but if I were making a note card, I would say that it is a donation, a tip, um, a gift of some manner that we give freely in order as a thank you, as appreciation, or to get some favor from somebody else. And oftentimes, and I'll just tell you my experiences of this, and I was trying to find it down here, is that the gratuity people often leave for police officers, which you should not be taking, is then when police officers walk into a restaurant and the business owner wants to show your appreciation for being a police officer, they will say that the meal is on them and so they won't charge you for the meal and that is a gratuity a free gift from the business to establish the business proprietor basically and you'll learn as you go through the academy that gratuities are wrong on many different levels it's a way of paying for your service your loyalty and there's a lot of things that um, are wrong the business owner will expect more officers to come in the business, the more police officers that are in somebody's business, the more protection you have in that business. And then also they get to know you at a deeper level, so you're less likely to ticket him or let him off on something. So it's just a bad business all the way around. Gratuity. Okay, so this is uh, just a video to tell you I would highly recommend that you use this site to learn words that you're having problems with and then take a sentence uh, that makes sense to you that um, that you'll remember and stick in your head. So here, if you're a baseball fan, then in illegal gratuity, that means that somebody paid for the World Series to, to put that person a free trip to the World Series and they shouldn't have. Okay? I hope that you find this helpful. Take notes, write sentences, and um, become better at your vocabulary so you become stronger on the pellet B and stronger in your reading skills. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you on the next one.